And honestly, Lance, I sat there for years going, I wonder what he means by that. Because <laughs> it sure looks lost to me. Right. And then right. now that I've been around the block a few more times and I've seen the depth of the symbols and the repetition of the symbols, I'm prepared to agree with him. Wow. You speaking of photographs, did you get any feedback from people on those amazing pictures you took of the pyramids with the with the uh the uh, odd uh, things that showed up on your camera? Well, I have hardly shown them to anyone. I did post them in a way that the listeners on Fireside Chat could access them and I had them on my website and if you signed up, you could see them. I've not shown them to people like William Henry who are talking about plasma fields. And um, it's I've been keeping them pretty close. Um, I I just I'm actually a little nervous about um, exposing them too far and wide because I'm telling you I get so many emails I almost can't handle it anymore. So well, that's um, understandable. I haven't you know posted the pictures of the uh, ceiling of the Temple of Dendera. Mm. So no, and I don't know what to say about them. But you know what else? You don't have to be able to explain it in order mm. to have it. Don't, like you can see that it's obvious that it can't be lens flares because of the the, the angles and that sort of thing. And there's, there's you know they've been examined for for that kind of thing. But mm. um, no, I can't explain them either. Well, I'll just tell you that the, my first reaction was just complete shock and startle. <laughs> so, and that only happens when something is it, it's beyond the visuals. It, it had it wasn't the visual. It was what it did to me that. Uh, was so so astounding. So, well, and I've I, been sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I've been on the phone with people while they go on their computer and look at them, and they're just like gasping, like. Oh, God, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll but, probably you know, like get... people expect the same old, same old. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard all about that. Like a lot of people, yeah. you know, like the Paramico, whatever. Yeah, 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 I know all about that. Have you seen it? No. Well, they just expect the same facts to be regurgitated. Oh, it and is. Not. I really don't want to be interviewed by anybody who hasn't hasn't seen it because you would never guess what's in there. Oh no, you couldn't possibly. And, and when I was rewatching episodes four and five last night, uh, it was like a, I was getting it all over again. And then, uh, you know, I thought this is absolutely a masterpiece. <laughs> you know, it's a treasure. And anybody that doesn't take uh, doesn't avail themselves of that uh, that uh, that experience is really missing out something wonderful. Well, um, and a lot of people are watching it on YouTube, and I can't keep oh, it off YouTube. Too many people yeah. upload it, and then you're looking at it teeny tiny and really poor yeah. quality. It is filmed in HD, it's and the so most common... On, pardon? It's so different on a big screen. Oh, yeah, and the most, oh, common, the most common comment is that people finish it, and they watch it again and again and again to the point where their kids are going, Mom, why do you keep watching that same DVD? <laughs> <laughs> but now oh, it's going to be like it's been encrypted, and it takes a long, long time to encrypt five hours of film, oh. so that it can be on Netflix and pay to download, pay to view, and oh. then you get the 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 high def version of it straight off the high def tapes, which is even better quality than the DVDs, either PAL or NTSC, North America oh. or Europe, and so that's new. And and that's been a big deal, that you know, big contract thing that, that it's coming out apparently March fourth. But oh. pretty soon that'll be, you know, so anybody can instantly, because they want to see it now, can see it in the highest quality. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, I was wondering, too, if uh, if there was anything that you'd like to share with us tonight that about, you know, since we are in this acceleration, we're actually, we're kind of in a, in a nanoparticle of a second before it or in it. Um, if, you, if there's anything you'd like to share with us tonight that might have practical applications as we go through these shifts, um, and maybe anything that might relate to your research with the pyramids and the Mayans and the rest of it, or just anything at all. Well, what is becoming clearer to me is that we're all becoming more psychic, and the connection to Mother Gaia and the wisdom of the Earth is what will upgrade our DNA. So our DNA went from 12 strand down to 2 strand, and it's augmenting 2 to 3 to 6 to 9 to 12. And that's the the way that it evolves. And the only way that we can get the hits is by being in nature and by being conscious. Mm -hmm. So meditation is about coming back down to neutral. And people say, well, I, I can't meditate because I had a thought. But actually, when you have a thought, you've actually remembered. 
to come back to center. Uh-huh. And people say, well, I, I don't know how to meditate. Well, my, my master's research simply indicated that there's no person that's better at it or worse at it or anything <laughs> about practice. Yeah, yeah. And you either you're messing with your head and you're letting yourself float, or the minute you realize you float, you come back. So mm. being in nature, meditating in nature is probably, you know, the combination of two yoga retreats on the beach, something that has you sitting keeping your spine straight, clearing your mind, breathing fresh air and being on the earth, walking in the woods, letting the mm. tops of trees comb your aura, and then, you know, putting yourself in water and, you know, breathing exercises, that sort of thing. Like there's something about being in water, by water, away from electromagnet, uh, electrostatic, um, anything, away from synthetics, keeping the mm. house open to the extent that you can with fresh air coming in, if you can sleep with your window open, All Mm -hmm. of these things make a huge difference. If Mm -hmm. you're in a closed air, and I say closed brain circulation system, and you stay indoors, drive into your garage, you know, go to work, park on your ground, you Mm. spend the whole day in a building, you go across what we call plus 15s to the next building above Mm. uh, above the road, you literally are cut off Mm -hmm. from from Mother Earth, and from the and that's the Earth is making the transition. The solar system is going into the galactic core. And the dates aren't October 28, 2011. It's sunset, the Great Pyramid, December 21st, 2012. The alignment is absolutely clear. We, we've been very close to that and circulating through. And, uh, and so we've just got to keep ourselves in neutral to the extent that we can and build our communities, and it's been said that if we think the whole world's going to fall apart, how would we live if the world fell apart? Then start living that way now. If right. you have to walk everywhere because your car doesn't work, start walking. Right, right. If you're going to be planting seeds, where are they? Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. need water, where is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you, you think you're going to end up being vegetarian, we'll start. Right, right, right. And so that's really powerful. So if there is no Internet... How do you spend your day? That's a very good question. It's a very good question. And if the electrical grid goes down, that's, you know, one one less interference pattern to uh, take us away from being connected to everything. The Internet goes down as it did in Egypt in a nanosecond. Oh, yeah. What do you got? You've got telepathy and you've got yourself and that's people right. that you can walk to. Well, Internet, that's no, right. we haven't lost our cars, but that may happen, too. Pardon no. me, I've got something in my throat. <clears throat> I got too excited there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, one quick question that uh, I'm not sure that you could address tonight, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. I wanted to ask you when we were talking about the Gnostics, and um, I was just uh, watching a program on that, uh, and they they seem to be pretty uh, convinced that the negative influence was created here by the archons. Do you have any uh, thoughts on that or intuition or feelings about that? And, and Yep. Well, it's, 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 it's very interesting. I, I direct people to John Lamb Lash's work. There's a 37-part 30, uh, thing on YouTube called Not in His Image. It took me a week to go through it. Very deep, very sophisticated, and thanks for that. I'm glad because it's you know we we've been deep as mud puddles with 30 second sound bites, and we think we can understand everything in a few <laughs> seconds, and it's too deep for that. Yeah. And so uh, Jay Widener talks about it as well, and it's connected to the matriarchal feminine consciousness and all of that. Yeah. And the archons were a byproduct of when Gaia Sophia presented herself, and the creativity created the earth. And it, it sounds very mysterious, but basically. Um, it's a phenomena that happened, and the archons couldn't get in. And so it's almost like they're little greeblies, that, <laughs> you know, ghostbusters that can't quite get in, and they're not really here, but they, you know, can do nasty and annoying things yeah, and make yeah. it look like certain things are happening, and they actually have no power, and so they puff themselves up like abusive, abusers, if you will, mm-hmm. molesters, to make it sound mm-hmm. like, you know, they're the king of the castle and everybody else, you know, who's got to, you know, believe everything they say when actually they have no power, which is why they have to puff themselves up so much. So mm. uh, it, it's it, they're supposed to be scheduled to be gone, and that's why I'm concerned about people 
being conscious and not just towing the party line with the collective unconscious mm. and believing what everybody's saying mm-hmm. when it may not be true. Mm-hmm. And so Absolutely. I have said, I've been saying this for 20 years, that when we come to the end of the Mayan calendar and the Mayan cycle, that this is a failed experiment and it was a 5,000 year one and that they've been the la- in their last kicks trying to puff themselves up and make themselves look even more important and angry. Mm-hmm. Uh, but because really their time is done. So if we all wake up and just don't buy it for a mm-hmm. second, mm-hmm. I'm not sure what will happen. And I'm not saying that, you know, all we have to do is smile and pray and, you know, the whole world will fix itself. I mean, we are right. in some very interesting times and there's a big mess out there. No kidding. No and kidding. so I do think that there's a lot to the Archons and they've been called many things, but it's almost How are you going to prove what year the Anunnaki landed, and if there even are Anunnaki. Mm-hmm. And is it a legend or, you know, the thing is, is that we, you know, this is some, some topics are a little bit more measurable. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, we've got to choose our battles in terms of what we can prove, and then we've got to feel in our bodies about, you know, what we believe and what we don't. But if you're just listening to people out there without discerning inside yourself, oh, the Anunnaki are there, oh, they're blonde, no, no, they're the, the reptilians, no, they're ne- they were never here, oh, yeah, they're here, no, they're not. Like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Who's going to prove who the Anunnaki are? Right. And, uh, you know, we've got to really be, really be careful here, but I think that the power of the evil and the negativity is scheduled to end. It doesn't look that way. Yeah. But it's my conviction <clears throat> that they're scheduled to vaporize. Well, that's a very positive way to end this uh, show. <laughs> and um, you've uh, you've often said, uh, actually, on just about every show, that you feel that the uh, that as 2012 uh, approaches, that we will begin to see a change, and we will begin to feel the change towards the light or towards the towards the direction of the golden age. So it's about seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And being That's able right. to, and be able to put another foot forward, out of the template of negativity and uh, the rest of it that we've been talking about tonight. Well, we need to be realistic and plan for a miracle. <laughs> and tie our camels. <laughs> yeah, trust in God, but tie up your camel. That's it. That's it. Um, well, uh, Carmen, we've, oh, this is just about the end of another show. Um, I urge everybody to get your uh, DVD, The Pyramid Code, and it can be found at www.pyramidcode.com, right? Yes, and also everywhere, Amazon.com. Oh, good, good, good. Nobles and everywhere. Everywhere in Europe as well, Australia. Wow. You can access it. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming back again and sharing yourself with us all, and um, I look forward to our next Fireside Chat. Thanks, Lance. (laughs) All right. Have a nice evening. You too. Good night. All right. Good night, everybody.